Talk show host Ellen DeGeneres and former President George W. Bush at a football game, it sent social media into meltdown. This is how Ellen responded. Here's the thing. I'm friends with George Bush. In fact, I'm friends with a lot of people who don't share the same beliefs that I have. We're all different, and I think that we've forgotten that that's okay that we're all different. Just because I don't agree with someone on everything doesn't mean that I'm not going to be friends with them. When I say be kind to one another, I don't mean only the people that think the same way that you do. I mean be kind to everyone. Well, that's what she tried to sell herself as, tried to say, hey, this is, you know, not what you think it is. It's OK. Let's just be a little kind. We are very happy to say we've got uh, comedian Claire Hooper with us on the couch here and all the way from New York City, Deputy Director of Breaking News at BuzzFeed, David Mack. Good morning, David. Hi, old friend. How are you? I'm very well. Hey, I want to start first with you because you're in the US. You would have seen how big sure. this um, took off. What was the vibe and has Ellen survived it? Well, the vibe was, as you said, everyone was talking about it online and then a whole bunch of A-list celebrities started to uh, comment and applaud Ellen for her as well. You saw people like Reese Witherspoon sort of putting a whole bunch of love hearts on her post and saying, you know, you're preaching, amazing, love it. But then you had celebrities like Mark Ruffalo from The Avengers coming out and saying that George Bush is a monster and we can't start being kind to him until he apologises for what he did in Iraq. So it's certainly something people have been talking about, that's fair to say. It's such a, an interesting question is... I mean, she, at the end of every show, Ellen literally says, be kind to one another, which I think is a really great message. But can you be kind to someone who you don't politically agree with? Claire, Claire. what do you say? Oh, look, <clears throat> absolutely. We're all friends with people that we don't politically align with, and those people are called our family, and we don't <laughs> need to find any more to surround ourselves with, do we? That's very true. I'd like to see Christmas at your house. Yeah, Claire, no, 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 no. <laughs> My mum and dad are right on. Um, but, yeah, I feel like she does talk about being kind, but it would be a very kind thing to acknowledge that being really buddy-buddy with somebody whose politics was quite harmful to a lot of the people who consider her a true ally. You know, like, she's got a lot of people to, who look to her as an example that they belong in the world, and he was a great example of... Uh, yeah, I just think... I think their friendship would be triggering to a lot of people... David, the, ty the, the atmosphere in the US is that people are so polarised. I know mates of mine over there just won't even have dinner with people from the other side of the political spectrum. You've been there now for, what, five or so years? Has it changed in the time you've yeah. been there? Oh, I think, as you said, it's getting sort of worse and worse all the time in terms of just uh, the political heat. But I think it's also just because more people are paying more attention all the time. You've got social media, you've got the non-stop news environment, Trump is a news machine, so people are sort of engaging all the time with it. And, of course, that means people are drawing lines. But I would just distinguish between, I think, being nice to people on whose politics you disagree with and being friends with them. I think those are two different and important things. No one's saying that Ellen should have thrown George Bush out of the skybox. I think people are just, uh, as Claire said, quite sort of concerned by how someone who is arguably the most famous lesbian in the world can sort of preach this feel-good environment with a man who worked uh, very hard during his presidency to make the lives of LGBTQ Americans uh, quite awful. And the same day that she went out there and you saw that clip of her Apollo sort of explaining herself, the Supreme Court was hearing arguments about uh, whether or not employers in this country can fire LGBTQ people just because they're LGBTQ. So I think, and, and Bush, of course, had appointed two justices who are likely to find that, yes, you can fire people uh, for being gay. So I think a lot of people, as Claire said, have some questions for her. But isn't the point, though, David and Claire, that the people who are saying, who are criticising George Bush and for being intolerant of certain people are being completely intolerant of him? And actually, we're not going to get anywhere if we just sit in silos and don't talk to one another. And, I mean, you know, in days gone by, there would have been no question of anything wrong sitting next to someone who you disagree with. I remember my grandfather used to say, I don't like that man, therefore I need to get to know him better. Isn't that a good point? Yeah, absolutely, that's a, that's a good point. Yeah, she has every right to talk to George W. Bush, she, you know, to sit next to him, but it did look really pally. It's not but just so that what, photo. So, but so what if it looks pally? I mean, and apparently, she, apparently he's friends with Michelle Obama yeah, as well. Is I that know. right, David? 
Uh, well, there was that photo of them a few years ago uh, at the dedication for, I think, the Black History Museum here in DC, uh, where they were giving each other a hug. But I think you'd argue that people who live in the White House probably have their own bubble about uh, you, your friend choices are probably somewhat <laughs> limited. So does this mean everyone needs to start checking their contact books to work out? <laughs> oh, Claire? Man. I mean, talking. Uh, if I can talk personally for a moment, I'm constantly falling in love, friendship-wise, with people who I don't like. You know, I meet people at political events and we're completely opposed, but in person they're inc incredibly charismatic and I'll, I'll get a little bit giddy around them. And <laughs> So I completely understand how Ellen could want to be friends, but I just, you just she's got to think of the literally millions of people who, for her, you know, for them, it looks like she's wearing a I love George W. Bush t-shirt and that's harmful. Hey, David, just quickly, last question to you. Do you reckon Ellen can get through this? Is this just a bump in the road? Oh, Ellen's whole uh, brand is kindness, so and, and she sort of targets herself to middle America. I'm sure she is going to continue being Ellen. She's not going anywhere. All right, David Mack, thank you so much for joining us from New York. And Claire, thank you as always for your insights. <laughs> thank you. I'm very impressed that you go to so many political events, Claire. Yeah. I hadn't pegged you for it, but there you go. I'm all over the place, guys. Yeah. <laughs> many, many strings to that particular bow. All right, speaking of strings to...